Welcome everyone to this session of the Alumni Spotlight interview. Here we are with Mini. She finished college uh, in 2019, and now she's studying a bachelor's degree in biology. Welcome, Mini. Thank you, Jessica. So just to get started with the questions, the first one that I wanted to ask was, which course you consider has helped you most um, in your work experience or in your studies now? Um, you know, I think it really depends what kind of industry you end up working for. Um, since I worked in a microbiology lab, so I found the microbio course at Centennial was very useful. I was already equipped with techniques like pour plates, spread plates, using microscope, and I'm sure biotech students know what I'm talking about. For someone who ends up working in a molecular bio lab, they will find that the recombinant DNA technology program will be very useful. And now that I'm doing my bachelor's degree in biology at university, I see that the lab work I'm doing is a lot like what I did at Centennial. And that experience actually gave me a head start. That was nice. But so like the lab uh, experience that you got from college helped you a lot then. A lot, actually. Experience. Yeah. Okay, that's nice, thank you. So the second question is like, looking back, what have you done differently as a student? Maybe, I don't know, volunteering groups, maybe use more some facilities? Yeah, when I reflect my on my time as a student, um, I think I wish I had involved myself in volunteer work more. I While I focused on my studies and I was gaining practical experience through my co-op placement, um, I realize now the additional value that volunteering uh, brings to your personal, uh, your personal development and professional development. And uh, now that I'm in process of applying for med school, it's become even more evident how critical volunteering can be in many fields, especially medicine. And uh, you know, you're not just contributing to the community, but to your own personal growth from these experiences. So my advice for students is to go find a club that interests you, even a sport, or go join it, but do so without compromising with your studies. Um, mm -hmm. I know it's easy said than done, but at least try. And that's definitely, there's definitely more to being success, uh, to successful than just grades, you know? That's what I have learned so far. Mm -hmm. And maybe in those, activities, group activities or volunteer groups, you can even meet people that can help you like network later or build exactly. a solid community here. I, I definitely agree. You make connections and those connections might help you later on. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And so while you were studying besides classes, uh, did you do any activities like hobbies, you, um, any sports, you hang out with friends, other courses maybe? Um. So as I was an international student, I also worked part-time to cover my living costs. That left me with limited leisure time. Um, but I often spend that time like exploring the city on my own. Um, I would just take random subway, go to some place and then find my way back home without GPS, just so I could not be dependent so much on people. And I focused heavily on my studies and work, which meant that, you know, I didn't have enough time for things like volunteering or hobbies. They were not a big part of my routine. Um, I worked at Wendy's in North York as a cashier. There were fun times. I met amazing people. I was very shy at the beginning, but then gradually I got a hang of it and was super comfortable talking to customers. And, you know, that experience really helped me improve my communication skills. As a result, you know, like I was able to approach people more easily now. And uh, so I feel there is always something to take away or something to learn. Even from the part-time jobs, you might not value so much. But now when you think of the time back, uh, it has shaped, to, shaped you in some way. Mm -hmm. oh, that's nice. So maybe it also helped you like um, improve your confidence in English that it's not your first language, right? Yes, so maybe definitely. Yeah. And like, 
Um, regarding the job search, what were the main challenges that you find in like, course related, career related jobs? Um, there's, there's usually many challenges, you know, when you're trying to secure your first job and especially when you have no prior work experience. And most jobs, if you look, they do require some sort of experience. Um, I think that's where my co-op program at Centennial really helped me. I had to take an extra course and we were taught how to make good resume, cover letter, as well as, you know, we were given insights into job application process. So, and that's how I was able to secure my first co-op with Bureau Veritas Group of Laboratories, uh, which was for four months. It was an unpaid co-op. However, the experience that I gained was so invaluable and I know that there are un, like paid co-ops as well if students are concerned about like finances. I'm pretty sure there are paid ones too. Um, again, it depends on what type of work you're leaning towards. And in addition, you know, like a good preparation for interview, I feel is so much important. You know, it's one thing to look good on resume, but you know, you also have to deliver a confident and authentic performance during the interview. So I and I highly recommend students, you know, who have no prior work experience, um, definitely explore the co-op option. It's it's so much beneficial. Like you can actually avoid some challenges that you face when you know you're looking for your first internship. Yeah, and um, you can even like um, build networks there also. Like your bosses can know your work and your dedication, and maybe they can even hire you later with like a payment, a monthly pay. Yes, I. in fact, I was hired as a full-time employee later on by the same company uh, once I finished two work terms with them. Um, my first term was unpaid, but the second one was paid. And eventually, you know, I was trained enough. So for them, it was uh, more better to hire me than someone completely new who had no work experience, you know, with them. Yeah, that's nice. They get to know your work again. And regarding um, interviews, do you like find some difficulties there? What are the main questions they ask you? They are very technical, or maybe they are more like personality reactions. What's the the in the interview part? Can you give us some tips? So you know, when applying for job, I feel like. This is something we ignore. Everybody tells you communication skills are important. Yes, they are. Uh, teamwork, uh, soft skills. But we forget some basic things like, you know, when you apply, first of all, approach the process with full diligence and seriousness. So have a clear idea in mind what job types you're aiming for. And then create a well-structured resume according to the qualifications they're looking for or the experience, you know. And then uh, this is one thing that I learned during my co-op program at Centennial is that you, you do not use the same cover letter for each application. So have a customized cover, customized cover letter that allows you to highlight, you know, your unique skills, your experience that aligns with the specific role and, you know, the organization that you're applying to, um, showing your genuine interest and effort in the company. And I mean, to stay organized throughout your job search, create a spreadsheet to track each application, including details like, you know, the company name, position applied, date of application, follow-up dates. And then you asked me like about some particular questions they ask for. It's always a mix. It's all, they, it's, it always begins by uh, asking about your background. So you basically run through your resume in gist. And then there are a lot of situational questions. They give you a situation that, what would you have done if this was a situation? And so during my co-op, I learned something called a STAR method. Um, so I, if students can look into it, like Google it, and they'll find that this can be very beneficial when forming an answer to the questions. Um, and also do not memorize answers from Google. Just try to be authentic. And yeah, I think... Uh, these are some things that I found very useful when I was applying for jobs. So it's like go um, determine, um, having researched the position, the company, 
even sometimes the interviewers so maybe you can like ask questions back if he's going to be your direct boss if he's like human resources guy and yeah. then um just be yourself so no memorizing questions no exactly. answers and you show yourself your personality of you in the job itself okay yeah yeah it's and, it get some idea you know from uh, uh, google like it gives you like a maybe like a template it can give you like a format like how you can form an answer but it's better to talk about your experience rather than you know just memorizing something up online okay. and in the lab experience at the college can we give examples of that in the interview maybe some project courses like you can say oh this happened in my course and I fixed it this way, or I had to travel with my partner this way, and we fixed it like this. Because some, most of the students don't have really a, a, an ex a work experience, so they can just relate to lab work in the college. So is it um, worth mentioning those examples? Um, I'm sorry, Jessica, could you please repeat your question? So we do, um, for some students that don't have job experience they only can only relate to lab experience in class and uh, most of the time we do labs in pairs or in groups so we also can encounter some um, disagreements with our partners or in, in the experiment itself we don't get it right so my question is can you explain those questions those issues in your interview um because you lack of a job experience in the field, can you like say, oh, I was, uh, I had an issue with this, um, I don't know, media, but I fixed it with another thing. Yeah, that's a that's a, actually a tough situation to be in. I think a lot of people, when they are looking for their first internship, that they go through this issue. Um, and I think somewhere that the companies need to understand is that, you know, you have to give the opportunity to the student in order for them to um, actually gain some experience. Instead of looking at experience, they could look at maybe some volunteer experience students have. Um, maybe, I don't know, some students come with uh, a bachelor degree or master's already from back home. If that even gets counted, you know, it's it's so beneficial to those students. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's uh, somewhere that the companies also need to understand that if they're not going to give the opportunity, then how is someone even going to get a head start to, to their career, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, in the field, which biotech area you think it's, has more job opportunities? Maybe the food ones, pharmacy? Uh, when you explore the market, what do you see? Like, which one offers more opportunities? Um, so I think, uh, again, it's biotech is so expansive field. Mm -hmm. And uh, based on your interests and strengths, I mean, there's so many that can be rewarding. Now, if you ask me, like a specific area that I think is has a substantial potential for growth. I think and that is bioinformatic, computational biology, and computational chemistry. Um, these are pretty new areas. A um, lot of universities still don't offer this program, but they are beginning to. And you know, these fields they are new and they merge biological data with techniques from you know statistics, um, computer science, informatics, and it is it's actually becoming so important in medicine, biotechnology, pharmaceuticals, and healthcare is another great area, I mean, for biotech graduates, you know. So as I am now pivoted towards healthcare, I encourage people to join that industry, and I think there is great scope for growth. Yes, okay, thanks for that answer, because I usually think biotech as industry like environmental food or pharma but i i haven't had in mind those like, computational or even health related biotech okay thanks and like the last question is more personal um information of you like what are the hacks or tips you can give to international students that just came here for study and are struggling yeah i have so many i'll try to keep it short um so i'll begin by saying that remember the reasons that brought you to this country whether they are already 
clear in your mind or you know it's still taking shape that's totally fine like but have a purpose because that's so important it acts as a compass it will guide you through any challenges or opportunities it's also very it's it's not important to be good at everything master or everything rather just pick one thing focus on it and strive to excel in in that area um many of you have made you know significant sacrifices like financially personally to be here myself included um acknowledge that and you know let it fuel your drive to succeed you carry you know not just your dreams but then the aspirations of those who have supported you like your family you have to make them proud and you know contribute to the community that has welcomed you i think canada has so many opportunities um and even the college has so many resources societies clubs to networking events job fairs i think go explore immerse yourself in these opportunities something i wish i had done more of um and another thing that i want to say is that you know like in these economically challenging times manage your finances well having fun is good but you know try to put some money aside as emergency funds you know international students offices academic advisors peer support groups there are so many other valuable resources that can help you out and uh, and last but it's the most important thing take care of your both physical and mental health because if you're sick all of this is meaningless mm-hmm. so all the best to all the students at st edward okay. thank you many for your interview it's been really helpful for us to open up our minds a little bit thank you jessica uh, thank you for um thanks bye